You are tuned in to Big Boys and Body Slams, three goofballs that talk about wrestling. Throwback and current day pay-per-view reviews. Follow us on Twitter at BB and BS Podcast. And while you're at it, check out our merch store and our Patreon page. All the links will be in the description below. Enjoy the show. What is up, Polgamaniacs? Welcome to another episode of Big Boys and Body Slams. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. I can't hear you. Good, Dad. Well, you know what's going pretty good there, Zach. Uh My name, as Luke just alluded to, is Zach. Luke's name is Luke. That's right. And I'm Kyle. Kyle's name is Kyle. No shirts this week. No shirts this week. And you don't even get to see our naked torsos. No, no, you don't. Nope. You should hey, buy some shirts. We're coming up. Uh, we got an interesting show today. I guess I'll start with that. Uh, but we're coming up on an interesting run of things here. Uh, we're going to have a special guest next week. I'll get this right out of the way off the top. Uh, Professor Joe is going to be joining us. And then after that, we'll be live for the Royal Rumble. Uh, yes. A match which, uh, uh, breaking news. Yeah, Braun Strowman uh, Braun out Strowman's of the Royal off Rumble. The show. No. No. no universal, no universal title, title, match. title match at the Royal Rumble now this year. How wild. As of, right, as of recording this, we're recording this during Raw. Yeah. So things could change, but as, as of now. As the spoilers have said, I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll know more by the time this episode's out, but it looks yeah. like Braun's out of the Rumble, okay. Brock's off. I still think they should have just gone with Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. Yeah, so, I totally agree with that. So with neither of them in the Rumble match, they, I neither mean, not, that, not that Brock, yeah. But who's gonna who's gonna get the uh, famed Diesel spot? Who's gonna be who's gonna show up and clean out the entire ring and be standing alone? Because that always happens every year. Our truth. He's gonna come in at thirty. Yeah, and he's gonna win. Yep. Yeah, but uh, Drew McIntyre. Oh, yeah. actually, yeah, he's That's right. That's a good call. That's a good call. I say so. Yeah, just a little interesting tidbit. Uh, uh, Kyle, if somebody wanted to listen to this podcast and for some reason couldn't find it, even though they're already listening to it, where could they find us? Mm. Oh, you could probably find us on YouTube, SoundCloud. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and not those mother... Uh, Beep! From did you Spotify. say YouTube? I did say YouTube. He I said, said, he, said that first. And he like melded YouTube and SoundCloud together. Right YouTube, on. SoundCloud. Uh, yeah, so that's where you can find us. And today, before we get into things, uh, we're doing a Ring of Honor show, by the way. I'll just get it out of the way. Uh, we are brought to you by Patreon.com. That's right. Patreon.com. A common misconception with Patreon is that uh, people think it's just a crowdfunding or donation platform, but we like to look at it uh, as more of a membership because you're getting things in return. Things like having your name in the credits on our YouTube version, a shout out in the audio version. That's right. Our crispy voices shouting out your name. Um, And even my favorite, which keep your eyes out for this, a wrestling movie, a wrestling themed movie review, an extra, a bonus show once a month. Uh, depending on your membership tier, those are some of the things you're going to get. And early access for a dollar. For one dollar, you get the show at full one day doll hair. earlier. Uh, it's we think, only a dollar. We think the benefits are worth it. Uh, and I think it's definitely going to be worth your time and your money to contribute and become a member of our Patreon page. For more information, check out patreon.com slash bigboys and body slams. And as always, all the links will be in the description below. Hey, that, that was nice, man. Thanks. <laughs> With that being said, today... We have Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor, Super Card Eight what, or what Nine. Year? I apologize. What 2015. Year, 2015. Oh yeah. Okay, Zach. Thanks for answering that. Coming to us from Redwood City, California. There's 1,100 people in attendance. There's here. trees in, in Redwood. Uh, this is in a warehouse, and um, so <clears throat> I wanted to do a Ring of Honor show. I was a big fan of Ring of Honor right around starting at, at this time. And there's a period when I was really watching a lot of Ring of Honor, but but uh, Kyle and Luke. Not so much. So this was an interesting show because this was very much the still the old Ring of Honor presentation style when well, there's not a lot of like over the top flashy things happening. You popped my Ring of Honor cherry with this one. Ooh, was this your first Ring of Honor show you've ever seen? Yeah, all the way through. Wow. All the way through. Yeah. I've seen some matches. Like I've seen some of the old CM Punk stuff and Samoa Joe. Yeah, and, I've even but, seen some American Dragon stuff. Some Brian, oh yeah. some Brian Danielson stuff. Who? Brian Danielson. Fickle. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is an interesting show. I wanted to kind of, I, I specifically wanted to choose a show from this era because it's a very interesting time for Ring of Honor. So 
presentation wise, they've always kind of been this like gritty wrestling first, you know, ever since they were kind of born from the ashes of ECW, they've had, you know, this very, it's called ring of honor. So they have the code of honor. It's all wrestling based. And especially in their specials or their pay-per-views, it's all very much. Here's a match. Here's a match. Here's a match. Here's a match. Uh, but not only presentation wise, but roster wise, just so talent. F- for my counting, there's maybe five people from this show who are still employed with ring of honor. And it's only been, well, it's been about four years since the show was aired. Uh, and, and turnover is a normal thing in, in a professional wrestling company. This is a lot of turnover. Company, but this is a lot of turnover. And and something else that's really interesting is that everybody kind of looks at Ring of Honor as being pillaged by the WWE, which is true. V true. In a large part. However, only about half of the people who aren't with the company anymore are actually in WWE now. You To to be completely fair, I don't think it's just the WWE that takes the Ring of Honor New talent. Japan. No, yeah, New, New Japan. Japan has, Impact, yeah. AEW even is going to start taking some. Yeah, which we'll get into that uh, as we Ooh. go. So again, this was kind of their introduction to... Is this our first episode since they did that press? The no, this is our rally? second episode. We were talking about it last week. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah. So Where am I at? Where And actually, I? <laughs> a couple of people up. on this show are actually in... Um, AEW, which yeah, I'm in I'm in AEW, and so is Kyle. So the show opens um, with oh, congratulations by the way, guys. Thanks, I, I, I don't recall ever being there, Luke. In this show, in this show. Oh, I'm so proud of you guys. Uh, so the show opens, no video package. Well, we get the standard Ring of Honor opening, uh, like video intro, um, and, and it's then, Kevin Kelly. Yeah, Kevin Kelly is on the call, and uh, momentarily he will be sat down. Uh, he will be accompanied by Adam Cole, Bay who Bay. is uh, not on the show and kind of out with injury at the time, so he'd be stepping in for a lot of the broadcast. And something that, so we noticed while we were watching the show, and this is a good thing to bring up at the top too, that something was off about uh, the commentary booth. So Kevin Kelly, I mean, he's a good commentator, so he sounded all right, but Adam Cole sounded like monotone, monotone and yeah. like bored. And I think I, I might have a reason why, not that it excuses him, but this was not a live broadcast this show is not broadcast live it was taped and then released as video on demand about a few weeks it was in april so a few weeks later so all the commentary was done in post so it's all canned audio which if you've ever tried to like commentate over something and you're not experienced it's not live yeah yeah, in front of your face you're not you you might not have that same passion and a a perfect example is the wwe video games (laughs) if any of you guys play those oh my god like it has a similar effect where like you're not invested in the action as much as you were if you were there Live. Well, really, a- any of those sports games that have the broadcasting yeah. recorded, uh, on the except side. for the NBA ones. True, they got pretty good. Well, and the yeah, show, the show has good. Uh, even even in too. NBA 2K, like it seems like they overreact to some things. It's yeah. like basic dunks. Uh, anyway. So it's kind of that effect going on here. Uh, it was just something I thought was interesting that this is, and this is their WrestleMania. This is SuperCard of Honor. That and Final Battle are like their two big shows, and. Uh, you maybe wouldn't know it <laughs> had you not had any prior knowledge of the company going in, uh, but we'll talk about that as we go. Shall we get into the first match? Let's do it. Uh, the first match of the evening is ACH versus Mark Briscoe of the Briscoe Brothers, uh, who are both kind of doing singles things at You know this what time. ACH stands for? Uh, no, I don't. Oh. It's, AC- auto- it's Automatic Clearinghouse in Banking. I think that's probably what it stands for here, too. Oh, nice. Um, and just to start our Where Is Everybody Now, ACH currently not in Ring of Honor. He is off in Japan working... Um, over there and working for some other indies, but he's not currently on the active Ring of Honor roster, so it's worth noting here. Hashtag Dem Boys. Yes, Dem Boys. I love I love the Briscoes, and they we get to see them both. One in the opener, one in the main event. Th- this is my first real experience with the Briscoes. Yeah, Ooh. and I have to say I really like them. They're very good. I like the gimmick. It, yeah. it, They're very rugged. You, you know what it yeah, reminds sure. me of? What? what the Godwins? But a more talented Godwin. I could see it. With, it's more like... Like a more hard-edged. Like a more, more realistic more, Godwin. Yes, a more yeah. realistic and a more current day... I could see it. Yeah, Godwin's like Fox, kind of... Like Fox gear wearing Godwins. Oh. What? Oh, okay, never mind. Sure. <laughs> I, it, 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 it's just that same like that... That that sticks... That grit. That gritty... I live in the sticks yeah, kind yeah, of... Uh, but, yeah. but the Godwins didn't have that edge like the Briscoes. No, the Briscoes no that's why I'm saying these guys vicious. were way more edgy. Uh, so you see... I'm going to see Mar- uh, even in Mar- Mark Briscoe's entrance, like he's missing his four front teeth. Like he, He's a rough He's looking. ugly. He's somebody that if I were to walk by in the middle of the night... Like, I bet an he alleyway, loves I would not... drinking out of straws. <laughs> oh. it, could, it could be noon and... It could be bright 100 degrees, and You're I'd still be terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's got a great look. And yeah. obviously, ACH has is, is, um, gone on to become a very successful on the independent circuit. Uh, so there's a nice tail of the tape, which we'll actually will get ahead of every match. Which I was going to say, I think that tail is the best thing. And from what I hear from AEW, they're going to be doing win-loss records. 
Yeah. And I wish that was done more often yeah. too. So it's cool to see a tail of the tape kind of sizing up both guys. And like I said, we will get that before every match. Uh, the men engage in a collar and elbow tie up to start the match here. Briscoe works over ACH in the corner. There's some big chumps by ACH. Uh, Briscoe lands on his feet after a body drop attempt for a near fall. Athletic as hell. Uh, yeah, it was. And there's a big boot to ACH and ACH sells it like he's dead. He uh, folds in half. Yeah, it was amazing. And then Adam Cole joins the commentary at this point. There's a Uranagi by bay, Briscoe. Bay. Thank you. Bay, bay, yes. Uh, Uranagi by Briscoe to ACH and then a snap belly to belly to ACH who then and Did you really just throw a pen yeah. at my face? <laughs> yeah, so I have to. I, Kyle just threw a pen. Can at we Luke. interrupt this shit yeah. to fight? Uh, <laughs> that hit me point first, you bastard. Kyle just threw a pen at Luke for no reason. What was that about? Explain yourself. I thought he needed a pen. I had two. You uh, heel bastard. Kyle, I think you owe Luke an apology before this podcast continues. Sorry I didn't throw the one with the cap. Thank you. Well, that's really all I needed. Can, can we God. continue, fellas? Now I have a blue yeah. mark on my chin. We're going to have to have a non-sanctioned match between you two one of these days. I don't, you know, know, saw, I don't we, know if you guys saw our YouTube video, but tempers were flaring When we air. get to the point that we're hosting a pay-per-view, it's on. Oh, yeah. 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 Cage match. You guys are going unsanctioned, too. Yeah. And, and there's going to be unprotected chair shots. Yes. Shall I continue? <sighs> yeah. yeah. Please. Sorry, Where sorry, did I leave off here? Sorry Luke interrupted that. Uh, uh, I'm sorry that you're dead. I'm sorry that Kyle threw a penny at you, Luke. Uh, so ACH Thanks. gets clotheslined out of the ring on the second attempt. He fought off the first time, goes out the second. Uh, Briscoe just goes for a drop kick outside, but ACH counters with a really nice looking one of his own. Back at, uh, there's a scoop slam to Briscoe outside onto the mat, and then a head scissors around the post on the outside to Briscoe. That was a cool spot. He like did like a six one nine maneuver and then head scissored him around the other side of the post. Oh, around the post. That was dope. It was really cool. Yeah, it was great. Uh, there's a knee drop to Briscoe for a near false uh, dueling knee drops, two of them back in the ring. Briscoe goes up top, hits a crossbody to ACH, and then does a missile drop kick to HCH in the corner, and then hits an exploding suplex right into the corner, kind of like a Bexploder, uh, uh, or the one that Sami Zayn does. I don't know what it's called, but he does I like find the that exploder you, into the I corner. I find that you call even like any normal T-bone suplex an exploder. Yeah, so it's called an exploder. Yeah. Uh, that leads to a near fault. Mm. Uh, Briscoe does the crane pose here. And then uh, gets spin kicked. I love that right in the face. It was great. The, yeah, the crane was sweet. He like did this prolonged crane pose, and then so ACH tries going after him like at his legs first, and then Briscoe like jumps up, lands on the same foot, and then uh, ACH tries for another kick, and then comes back and just clocks him right in the face with a with a nice looking spin kick. It actually really is ridiculous how athletic this guy is. I know both these guys. Yeah, both of them. Uh, but, and, but Mark does not look like he would. No, he doesn't. But he's he's very graceful. Uh, and there's a snap suplex to ACH on the outside of the ring. Uh, and then Briscoe does the cactus jack, bang, bang. And then he runs and does I the running elbow. Too. It was great. Off the apron. I love the throwback to cactus. I loved it. Uh, it was great. And then back in the ring, there's a stunner and then a snap bridging German suplex to Briscoe for a near fall by ACH. He was using the stunner from time to time at this point, kind of as a setup move. Well, and I, I tell you what, they certainly don't sell it like Stone Cold. No, the stunner has Jeez. changed. Well, I think that's Sheesh. a lot of old finishing moves in general look at like the ddt and yeah, the super sure. kick and the yeah, stunner but and here's i feel that tombstone pile driver and stunner should both be hallowed i feel like those should not those should be finishes and finishes only and people in the 80s probably thought that leg drops leg and drops. ddt yep, should yep, have been yep, the finishes. Yep. Yeah, well, and elbow drops ddt's all, i actually you kind know what, of agree it makes with me too. wonder i kind of agree DDTs leg drops as well. are bullshit. uh it kind of makes me think like 15 years from now what's a finish gonna have to be because like they're getting crazier yeah, like and crazier. a 780 yeah power bomb <laughs> My favorite finisher currently is the curb stomp because of the realism with it. Yeah, I like that one. But I like the I love Pete Dunne's bitter end too. Yeah, I don't know why, but that that move just is so nice looking. Everything's just going to be as ridiculous looking as a Canadian destroyer. Everyone's yes. finisher. I yes. just I just hope the Steiner recliner never ages. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kyle. Not a camel uh, clutch. So after the snap suplex, ACH goes up top. Uh, Briscoe gets caught as he's trying for a urinagi. He gets countered into a roll-up, and then Briscoe gets a roll-up of his own and actually gets the win here. The match went 11 and a half minutes. Um, I thought it was a really fun opening match. It was a good way to kind of get the crowd acclimated with what kind of a show this was going to be. Uh, a lot of fun action. I give it three stars. Um, wasn't the best match in the world, but it was very solid. I really enjoyed it for the opener. It got the crowd going a little bit. Um, I think the crowd wasn't as invested the whole show as I would have liked. Yeah. But I, th I felt like they got behind this one for the most part. They did. They and did. And so uh, I gave it a three stars. I thought it was pretty good. I, I like seeing the Briscoe brothers because I've never seen them. And I've never really seen ACH either. So cool. Yeah. Uh, three stars. I actually was very surprised with the, the counter pinning combo finish. Yeah, it was really nice. It's you. It's so rare that that yeah. actually is the finish. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, usually well, that's it, just like a setup spot. Yeah. yeah, and so that was fun. Um, with what you said, Kyle, with the crowd reactions... 
the production value, I mean, if you watch this, is is low. It's not, you know, any sort of WWE, TNA, any of that. Oh, yeah. So who knows if it's just not even picking up. If like, they're not well mic'd, because, yeah. because they were putting up chants and stuff pretty much all throughout the show. It just wasn't. You weren't you weren't hearing a lot of cheers and boos and stuff. So to kind of set the stage for this, like Three there stars. was literally, from what I could tell, one light lighting the entire building. Literally, just one huge one in the there top was like corner. a big bank light, like up in the corner, like a search above light. the ring. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, from what I could tell, that was what was illuminating this. And it was, and it was really weird because it was in like a working factory. It looked like because on the on like the entrance ramp side, so it was not where the hard cam was, but on the entrance ramp side, there was like this like huge glass pane, and it looked like like a factory on the other side or a mill or something when it had like some sort of the venue name in the beginning i can't remember it was, it was like the, the sport house or, sport house yeah sport it's, house. it's just a warehouse yeah exactly. hey we got late breaking news about the universe title real quick uh yeah go for it uh the main event of raw tonight yeah will be cena versus mcintyre versus balor versus corbin winner faces brock lesnar can for we the turn title. on raw interesting that'll be interesting Did you say so. corbin he gets all the yeah, yeah. He's, his name's baron corbin he's on the raw roster i yeah. am just sick of you um shall we move on Thanks for the update, by the way, Kyle. Yeah, I'll keep you updated. It'll be well, it'll be relevant by the time you listen. The people are listening, but <laughs> yeah. Thank you, anyways. Uh, so next up, right into the next tale of the tape, and we get Michael Elgin, Elgin or Elgin, 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 Elgin. 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 Thank you. Versus Frankie Kazarian. Uh, neither man are currently with the company. Elgin has been in Japan, and Kazarian is going with his SCU buddies to AEW. I love Excited. Kazarian. I do too. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Michael Elgin, and we can leave all the personal demons. Away from this I conversation. I am not a fan of Michael. Uh, uh, but I thought he was all right here. But something I mean, we'll get to it later. But something felt a little bit yeah, off. Yeah, but match. Kazarian. I don't know if Kazarian was coming off an injury or something. Something here. was going on. Uh, let's get into it. Mm. So Elgin starts with a stiff strike to Kazarian right off the bat. There's a roll up for a near fall to Kazarian by Elgin, and then a leg drop to Elgin over the middle rope. I love those. I don't know why, but I love those draping leg drop spots on the like apron. the guillotine looking. I love them, mm-hmm. and I this was no exception. This was really cool. Uh, back into the ring for an Elgin near fall here. There's a belly to belly snap suplex to Elgin, and then a flying forearm to Elgin. A lot of. Uh, uh, um, work that Kazarian's getting in here. Was it phenomenal? Uh, no, it was just a normal forearm. Oh, good. Uh, and there's a slingshot DDT to Elgin for a Kazarian near fall, and then Kazarian goes for an impaler, but Elgin fights back, and then there's a rolling senton leg drop to Kazarian as he's draped over the middle rope. Uh, kind of botched. Uh, awkward landing, awkward motion in the air. Uh, Kazarian botches a roll-up attempt, and then he like just goes into some like weird stretch-type submission. Uh, he like tried to get Elgin over for the roll up, but he like, couldn't do it. And then he just like was like, "All right, forget that spot. I'm going to do something else." We saw some very strange submission attempts. In yeah, this, this match was just kind of sloppy. It was. It was uh, just it all was. over the place. Uh, so again, there's like a stretch style submission. Elgin makes it, gets his foot on the bottom rope, and there's an enziguri by Elgin, which was pretty nice looking. And then he goes for a double stomp, but he like. <laughs> So usually when you go for a double stomp, you like stomp on the guy's chest or his back, right? But like Elgin jumped up and then just like spread his feet and like double stomped his hands. That's gonna hurt too, though. It was it was bizarre though. It was really I weird mean, looking. If there's one way to describe this match, yeah, I guess that's I that's, mean, that's good. Though to be fair, how would you feel if I like jumped on your hands? I'd feel bad about it. You actually yeah. probably would break them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you probably would. That's a fair point. So so I mean, that would hurt really bad because then you can't punch somebody. That's true. You can't uh, really do much of anything. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and then there's a deadlift German bridging suplex for Elgin for a near fall. That was really nice. This was very beautiful. Uh, that was a very beautiful suplex. Like Luke. And there's a swinging neckbreaker to Kazarian by yes. Elgin. And then jumping into Zaguri to Kazarian. Uh, and then there's a cutter to Elgin after a springboard move attempt uh, for a, a near fall by Kazarian. So Elgin was going for something off of like a springboard something and then got reversed into a cutter. And there's a super AA to Kazarian for a near fall. Uh, the super Sweet. A, of course, is when you get up off the off the second rope. I or prefer top rope. I prefer the super F U. The super F U, and then uh, there's a sit out power bomb right after that uh, to Kazarian, which is Elgin's finisher, and that is the match. It went uh, 11 minutes, I think. Uh, I forgot to write down the time, but it was either seven or 11. There was also a sweet tornado chop. Oh, was there? Yes, there was. That's how he led into the power bomb. Oh, okay. I didn't write that down. He like spun around and went. Ka! Uh, and it was, I thought it was a decent match. It had some good spots, but it was also really sloppy. I give it two and a half stars. I would have liked. I really wanted to give it higher, but it, there was just something off about these two and their work together. It might have been a chemistry thing, or maybe they didn't have time to rehearse the match or something. But um, there was some nice spots that did bring it up a little bit. But two and a half, very so, average. So I'm a big Kazarian fan, and this match, this match didn't do it for me. It was super sloppy. Um, there were some cool, cool spots, but I gave it two and a quarter. Um, I just really wasn't into it too much. It was about as average of a match as you can get. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good. That's fair. But well, 
I do love I do love Kazarian though. Yeah. I also love Frankie Kazarian, but I think that was what made it what was the difference between a three star match. Yeah. I, I gave it two and a half. Um moves just weren't connecting smoothly. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the selling just wasn't things there was just no continuity to it. So it yeah. felt really clunky to me. Um yeah. I, and honestly, Elgin looked better than Kazarian did. He did in this he match. Did. He yes. Now, that might just be because they gave Elgin more offense. Right, right. Um, but he had the better spots. And yeah, just like, for example, that middle rope leg drop you were talking about, it didn't even land clean. Yeah. Stuff it, just it was, was really not awkward. landing clean. So yeah, it, it could have been a lot better, but there were some cool spots that we hadn't seen before. Yeah. So two I and a half. Um, so and if you guys are keeping score at home, two singles matches. One person still <laughs> with Ring of Honor Ooh. after those two matches. And that's also, Mark Briscoe. I don't know if you mentioned. I didn't. I don't think I heard you mention this. Elgin used a plastic chair. For oh a yeah. Spot on the outside. Yeah. And that made me very curious on why there was no disqualification. Yeah, that's a good point. Because it's like, is it because it's plastic? Well, it he is- threw it at him, didn't he? <laughs> well, uh, then he put it around his neck, or is that later? Oh yeah, no, that's uh, that might have been in the ODQ match actually. Oh, God. But he was teasing a chair shot, but they have all these plastic chairs at ringside. He used it. He didn't swing it. He yeah. used it in some other way. Yeah. I didn't write it down. I guess I should have, but I think wow. he threw it at him because I think the over the next spot was in the no DQ match. The okay. Later on. Sure. So let's move on. Right after that, we go. Uh, Wait. Are you going to skip match, the whole post-match, post-match. Daniels and Elgin? Oh, yeah. So post-match, uh, Elgin just keeps on beating up Kazarian here. Uh, and uh, Christopher Daniels, and this time they're the addiction. SCU wasn't a thing yet, so his uh, addiction stable mate, not stable. Team also, mate. the world's greatest tag team of the world. Yeah, uh, he runs out to assist Kazarian. He eats the weakest chair shot I've ever seen in my entire life. Ever. Elgin just like lightly brushes him with his chair, uh, and then he gets sent out, power bombed, and that's the end. Of and that. poor, and poor Christopher. Poor. Uh, Christopher. He didn't. He didn't have. He didn't have his little soul patch either. No, he didn't. So I think he was really at this point trying to differentiate himself from the legendary Slick Johnson. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Well, we'll see him later, too. I love him. Uh, so after that, we're going to go right into our next match again. Hopefully get used to this. Uh, and this, this is, is going to be a six-man mayhem match. I just want to point out right now, yeah. I did not like going match to match to match to match without any filler. Was this when it started to like wear on you a little bit? Uh, yeah, kind of. It, it took a few ma- It took, like, yeah, four matches, but, uh, but we'll talk uh, about maybe it. Maybe after this one, too. I was starting to just kind of... I don't know. I never realized I needed filler before, like video packages and, I don't know, interviews. Well, I think a match like this, too, that is kind of convoluted with its rules, really could have used something. Like, like a little you know, backstory. Like even, even in, like, the Ultimate X matches, even if there wasn't, like, a huge story going into the match, they would always at least do a video package explaining the rules of the match, right? Right. Uh, or, like, at least the ring announcer will explain the rules of the match. But here it was all on up to Kevin Kelly and Adam Cole to, like, explain yeah. to you what was happening. So I'll explain to you who's in this match, and I'll explain to you the rules after that. So the match is Andrew Everett, Moose, Caprice Coleman, Cedric Alexander, Tommaso Ciampa, and Matt Seidel. That is a freaking good... The Sicilian psychopath Tommaso Ciampa. Yes, those are six great guys, by the way. Uh, so this is again as a six man mayhem match. So two guys start who are going to be Sadal, Sidal, sorry, and Andrew Everett. And you might want to include that Matt Sidal is who? He's Kyle? Matt Sidal. He's Matt Sidal of uh, Impact Wrestling. I hate you, Evan Bourne. Evan Bourne from WWE. WWE you also, might him also this. Ciampa and Cedric Alexander are both in WWE now, while Moose and Matt Sidal are both in Impact. Yeah. So uh, who the hell knows where Caprice and Andrew are? Uh, Andrew Everett is in Impact as well. Okay. Uh, Caprice did, Coleman didn't is- Everett just leave? He may have, actually. He may have. I thought he just left. Um, Andrew, or uh, sorry, Caprice Coleman's still with Ring of Honor, but he's not on the active roster. So he is, he's on the commentary team with Cole Cabana and um, uh, Kevin Ian Kelly. Riccoboni now. Oh, no, Ke- no Kevin the, Kelly. The, is with, is, he's okay. in New Japan. Yeah. Uh, um, I should say, I want to say this first. Yeah, Capri- go ahead. You, you told us that Caprice Coleman, because I've never seen him, you told us that he was kind of like a comedy act. Yeah. And I want to say he is more than that. He actually was pretty impressive. He looked I, pretty good in this match. I thought he was a lot better than you. Talked him up to yeah. be. He hater. looked pretty. He you're looked pretty good in this match. Uh, so again, if you're counting active members, and this this match is the one where it's like shocking to me because if you're counting active members of the Ring of Honor roster, there's six guys in this match. Zero of them are actively on the Ring of Honor roster, and only what only two of them are in the WWE. Sorry, three of them. Cedric, no, two of them. Cedric and Tommaso. So. Again, the narrative of everyone leaves the WWE. There are more guys in this match who are currently in Impact than are currently in WWE. I just thought that was an interesting yeah, but it's still point to it's, bring up. it's still like a, a yeah a vulture yeah. thing. Yeah, uh, so you can kind of count. They're going the other places. So we'll say one and a half people if you're keeping score at home or still with Ring of Honor. Uh, so again, the rules <laughs> of this match: two guys start. They're going to be Everett and Seidel. Uh First pinfall wins. 
Anyone can be tagged in at any time. And if somebody goes over the top rope, the first man in the ring declares themselves as the second legal man in the match. So it's a bit confusing. And I should say... It's ridiculous. I should say, too, these rules did not get followed in this match. No. No, there's this no point became, in it being so convoluted. This just became a normal six-man match by the end. It was hard for anyone in this in this match to even understand the rules. <laughs> it was apparently. so much fun. Should we get into it? Yes. yes. So Everett and Seidel start. There's lots of flippy shit to start. That's what I wrote. <laughs> uh, uh, there is, though. Lots of flippy shit to start. Quick action encounter. Cedric gets tagged in. Then Moose gets tagged in. Uh, sorry, Cedric tags in. Moose gets tagged in. Uh, and they're saying here Moose is on an undefeated streak in Ring of Honor uh, in his in his young career, which is good to know. Uh, maybe that'll end today. Maybe it won't. Uh, I guess it doesn't count if it's not a one-on-one match sometimes. If he doesn't take the pin, right? It yeah, what does count. that count on a record? I think if you don't take the pinfall, it doesn't count as a, as a hmm. loss. You know, um, I remember WWE doing a winning streak, and I don't remember for who it was, but they lost in a tag team match. It was Asuka. No, it it was it was back in two thousand three, two thousand four. Okay, sorry. And whoever jump off whoever it was lost in a tag team match, but they kept saying they were undefeated. Was it not Brock? No, it wasn't Brock. Hmm. So maybe if you take the pinfall. Yeah, it must be that. Okay, moving on. Uh, so Moose comes in, Cedric slaps him right in the face, which is not what you want to do to a guy who is much larger than you. Uh, don't do it, Kyle. There's a big boy drop kick to Alexander by Moose. Moose got up for that drop kick, and then Caprice tags in, and then Champa tags in. And uh, Moose is the man. Moose is great. He by can the way. fly, dude. He Holy can, crap. He's great. Uh, and then Ciampa comes in. He's just acting like this big, cocky, crazy heel. Again, he's a Sicilian psychopath at this point. Also, he, can we mention how Tommaso Ciampa, y- you said it while we were watching he this. He looks just like Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver. Well, but but now, like, it's like the Performance Center took like 10, 20 years Oh my off God, his life. I know. He looks like a young man here. And like four years later, he in doesn't NXT, have the big, white, brown beard. He looks like a 70 year old man now. <laughs> in NXT. It's crazy. He has aged so much. And he's a lot more defined. He looks, Wrinkles. I mean, too. he looks great. But he's very vascular now. Yes. Uh, and, yeah, he looks very very young and fresh-faced here. Uh, so Ciampa goes for a running knee. Uh, but So before that, uh, Caprice Coleman had given him the one-inch punch, and Ciampa no-sold it. And so Ciampa went to go for the running knee. And then, like, a minute later, the effects of the one-inch punch set in, and he couldn't execute the running knee He just went to down Coleman. to knee and, like, yeah. At first, I was like, is he having a heart attack? Because he, like, clutched his chest and, like, went down on his knees. And thus and then, enters the comedic thing you were talking yeah. about with Caprice. And then the announcers kind of put over, oh, no, it was the one-inch punch. <laughs> uh, so Sedal tags in in his place. There's a double knee drop for a Sedal near fall, and Cedric comes in and breaks up. He broke up the pinfall there. Lots of guys start getting thrown over the top here, so I'm not going to be able to keep track of who's legal and who's not. Uh, I know right now Moose and Everett are legal. Uh, Moose gets thrown out of the ring, and then Moose catches Everett as he goes over the top, power bombs him, not under the apron, but into the ropes, which is really interesting. Something um, you don't see. Pretty cool. Yeah, something you rarely ever see. And then uh, Caprice goes over the top rope, but takes out everyone. And then Cedric follows with his own dive over the top. Everyone's down at this point. Eventually, Ciampa and Cedric make their way back into the ring. A running knee sends Cedric right out of the ring. And then Caprice comes in, and he gets sent right out of the ring. There's a Project Ciampa to Everett, which is his finishing move, uh, which he still uses today. Uh, Sidal breaks up the pinfall, though. And there's a big standing moonsault to Ciampa for a near fall by Sidal. And he got air on that moonsault, man. Uh, Sidal takes out Caprice and Alexander, and he gets caught on a crossbody by Moose. So Sidal goes for the crossbody. Moose just catches him. He gets thrown out of the ring onto Champa. Everett comes back in. There's a pop-up lariat to Everett, which is also another move you don't see very often. Awesome. Yeah, it was great. And then a sky splitter to Moose by Everett. Champa comes in, hits a single leg running drop kick, uh, uh, or eats one that Cedric delivers into the corner with Champa's head. And then he, this was kind of like the cheeky Nando's kick spot you see in uh, in New Japan, where you like tuck a guy's head into his butt. The what? Uh, the cheeky Nando's kick. Mm. That's what it's called. Uh, and uh, but instead of doing a super kick, he like did a running single leg drop kick on the top. I thought that was really cool. Um, and then uh, there's a Hurricane Rana by Everett that plants Cedric. And then Everett goes up top. Uh, Caprice Hurricane Rana's him down. And then Moose hits a spear. And then Seidel takes advantage of it, hits a shooting star press to Everett for the win. The match went about 10 minutes. Um, this was a lot of fun. It was, a, it was chaos. Uh, it was a ton of fun. So... As, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I understand why you want to have the rules set in place so you only have two or three people in the ring at one time. They did not get followed. I'm t- I don't care. I'm fine with it. It was a really fun match. Uh, you it was knew pretty once sh- you heard the rules. Yeah. You were just like, yeah, this is going off the rails. It was, it was, it was uh, what did I say, 10 minutes, so it wasn't a super long match. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. The crowd was really hot for it. It could have uh, gone longer. I think it could have gone longer True. for sure. True. Uh, a lot of star power in this match. Uh, and it showed in, in the in the in the action. I gave it three point seven five stars. I gave it four stars. Ooh! I thought it was so fun. I thought it was super good. I am 
a huge mark for Moose. I love Moose. He is Moose Mark. I am a Moose Mark. Yep. Nice. Um, for for such a big guy, he is so agile. He is so yeah. He's so quick. Yeah. He's got like the the quick moves, the power moves, the flying moves. Um, and and also in this match, you can see Champa is going to be a star. Oh yeah. And then. I think and Sidal doing Sidal. I was gonna say Sidal might be one of the most underused guys in WWE history. Oh, for sure. Yep. He was so he and I'm so glad Impact has been giving him. He just he's injured flies. right now, I believe. Yeah, but yeah. at least Impact has been giving him like some some time. And I don't yeah. know if anyone himself. else gets as much air as he does, Dude, especially I, on his shooting star press. I was gonna like, say God. everybody talks about Billy Kidman's shooting star press, but Matt Sidal might have the best one. I think yeah. it was just because he was an OG. Well, like because well, yeah, because like he doesn't put guys like that far out like he puts them really close to the corner but instead of going out with his shooting star press he goes up it's incredible luke what did you think of the match uh i gave it three and three quarters the only reason i didn't give it four is because it was hard to follow yeah um it was chaotic it was amazing there was spot after spot i also um i actually haven't been exposed to moose very much i i see because i follow tna and impact wrestling on twitter uh and i remember seeing like promo stuff for moose for the last couple years but I just I just assumed he was just a bit another big dude. You just need to go home and you need to look up that match with uh, Eddie Edwards at Homecoming. Homecoming. It was so good, dude. He Moose Moose just sells and and he you can really. tell yeah you can tell here that he's the kind of guy that when he like comes to the entrance ramp like he you turns ha- it up. You pay attention to him. Yeah, he turns it up. And oh, yeah. This was like the birth of that, but now in Impact, like even when he's coming out to cut a promo, like the way he dresses, the I was way gonna he say, acts, the way he talks, the character that he's, he's developed is kind of like an Akeem the Dream yeah, character, but like even more eccentric. <laughs> yep, even more eccentric. It's it's phenomenal. Like goofy? No, no it, he just. That's the thing. It doesn't come off as goofy. It, it comes off as like a guy just doing his own thing. Okay, so you know how like. Macklemore, the rapper, wears the weird clothing, and it's just kind of became his thing. Yeah. yeah so, sure. so it's like the same type of thing. He's wearing weird off-the-wall clothing on yeah. every interview. Like fur coats and stuff. No, no, oh, okay. yeah, kind of. No, but you. like, he just is owning wearing these yeah. ridiculous outfits, and it's it, great. And, I love that. And it's not as ridiculous as we're making it sound. He, he's because one of you're my like, favorite guys on the Impact roster. Yeah, right me now. too. And well, because he's got the confidence, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's just yeah. it. He oozes confidence. And the Eddie it. Edwards feud was phenomenal. Yeah, it did a lot for him. Um, and it's been, I mean, that had been going on since Bound for Glory. Before that, yeah. Yeah. yeah so three, three and three quarters. Awesome. Everyone, everyone here got great spots in. Yeah. Everybody, and even like Caprice Coleman, like had some really cool. Uh, I, I, so I thought Caprice looked really good here. Yeah, yeah, I, well, I mean, I I know Luke had already said this, but when you know when we were talking to you about the guys in this match, you were kind of like, "Oh, he's just a comedy character. He's not that good." And then I'm watching this, I'm like, "Wow, he this guy's not me. bad." Also, I didn't get to call you out, but you literally called him half of a person still in ROH because he's in Ring of Honor, but he's not wrestling so, in Ring of Honor. So is Mauro Ronaldo half a person? I mean, I wouldn't count him if I was You're talking a about. Hater. Oh my gosh. Uh, so after awesome. the match, uh, Cedric and Moose refused to shake anybody's hand but each other's, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then they leave. So Zach, uh, you're a hater. Okay, I'm sorry. Why am I a hater? Because of Caprice Coleman, you call it half a person, dude. H a t r hater. Okay, should I count him as a full person or not? You know a what? H eight r. Whoa. Hater. Whoa. Uh, so after this, we get B J Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs in a no disqualification match. Uh, what, so what's Jimmy Jacobs' nickname? Uh, the Vampire Princess. No. The zombie princess. The zombie princess. I'm sorry. So, a little backstory on this match, since they didn't give you any. Uh, this match actually did have kind of a deeper, deepish backstory. So, uh, Jimmy Jacobs and BJ Whitmer used to be in a little stable with a young Adam Page as the decade, is what they called themselves, because they had the decade of experience in Ring of Honor. Uh, Steve Carino uh, was kind of involved in some way in there, too. And Steve Carino's son named Colby, uh, the whole story was they were trying to recruit, uh, specifically BJ Whitmer, was trying to recruit Colby to be in the decade. Jimmy Jacobs didn't approve, split away from the group to comfort Steve Carino because he thought his son was going down a bad path. That's how we wound up here. This would be Jimmy Jacobs' last match in Ring of Honor. Uh, and that's still true because even once, because he left for WWE to be on their creative team after this, he's he's wrestling again. But oh. I don't believe he's wrestled for Ring of Honor since he's made his interim return. Um, I could G- be wrong. Jimmy Jacobs has been managing Congo Kong and Impact. Okay, but okay. um, they haven't been on TV for a couple months. Like hmm. they had like a brief feud with Abyss where Congo Kong with Jimmy Jacobs beat Abyss with Jim Mitchell, oh, okay. and then it just disappeared. It hmm. almost looks like he's trying to go for a Raven vibe. 
he's yeah he's very eccentric here and then bj whitmer would leave he would wrestle up to about 2017 uh he would end up transitioning into a creative slash uh like comment fill in commentary role until he would leave for the performance center in wwe in 2018 so again neither guy is currently with the company uh at this point uh, and this is again an ODQ match. It's a blood feud. Of course, Whitmer comes out with, with, uh, with Colby, little little Carino. He looks like he's sixteen. He he. I think he was <laughs> close to right at this point. Didn't we say he was eighteen at this point? Seventeen or eighteen. Yeah. yeah. So he's very, he was a young boy, uh, which is what his role was, of course, before he got uh, bamboozled into joining the decade. Just tiny. Just a, just yeah. skinny as. Hell. So they actually hug to start the match, and then they start trading strikes. Uh, then they suplex each other right out of the ring, which was a really cool spot. Uh, Whitmer gets sent into the barricade, and then Adam Cole is just droning on. I really noticed in this match that it was like, I can't listen to this guy anymore. Like, he he had... So the thing is, he had interesting commentary, but his delivery was so dull. It was so dull. He was just, oh, He didn't yeah, care. This is a really good maneuver. Oh, I'm really invested in this match. Uh, Adam Cole? Yeah. Baby. Yeah. 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 Uh, Kelly sounded great. Uh, but Cole yeah, was he just... had a couple funny snaps at, at Kevin Kelly. Oh the yeah, but oh yeah. We'll get there. Uh, so a fan holds a chair, and then Whitmer gets sent headfirst into the chair by Jacobs. Uh, Jacobs throws a bunch of chairs into the ring, actual steel ones this time. Uh, and then we get inside. There's a dueling chair shot here. They hit each other with the chairs, which makes me wonder. Yeah. You know, uh, earlier Elgin was beating the crap out of people with plastic chairs. Yeah. If these steel chairs existed, why didn't you just bust out the steel chair? I didn't know. Well, to be fair, there were some plastic ones in the ring too. The plastic ones were what they set out at ringside and what the fans were sitting in. And then the steel chairs were under the ring specifically. Hey, we've uh, got a budget here. Yeah. People. Apparently for use as a weapon, I'm guessing. Uh, so there's a snap suplex to Whitmer and then a spine buster to Jacobs. Whitmer sets up a chair in the corner and then another uh, Jacob. So they're kind of set up against two tomb buckles on opposite corners. And then Jacobs like breaks his finger or something here, and like the ref like pops it back on camera. Ooh, that was gross. Yeah, <laughs> it was grody, dude. Yeah. Uh, Jacobs gets Iris whipped into the corner and then into the other corner, right into the chair. He recovers, hits a spear on Whitmer. Uh, there's a Jacobs chair shot, and then he sets it up, and then toe holds Whitmer onto the chair. That's a spot you see a bunch now. Um, and there's a cutter to Whitmer onto a chair for a near fall. Not even onto it, like into the chair. Like he ate the chair uh, and the snap power slam into the chair into the corner to jacobs for a near fall and there's a double fisherman suplex with a bridge for a whitmer near fall it was a bit messy uh, worth noting and there's an acid drop to whitmer by jacobs for a near fall and then jacobs manages to get past all- so he's trying to get a table out from out of the ring so but this is like top streamer era for ring oh of honor God. so like anytime a guy that they like they would come into the ring it's a japanese tradition that kind of has since come over here they throw streamers into the ring and poor jimmy jacobs could not get this table out from under the ring because all the the ring crew just stashes the streamers under the ring but and he had the hardest time he had to get help table out yeah, yeah he had to have a ring crew uh young boy come help him get the but, streamers off the table but the best part the biggest pop of this match was the crowd cheering for him when, when he, he finally got the table and he out. turned around and gave everybody a thumbs up that might have been the biggest pop of the night honestly like the, true the crowd loved that the part. crowd was dead for most of the show too. i should also say that i love me a good acid drop oh Very yeah Very underrated. you got to see a couple of them by jacobs in this match um yeah, I, I loved that part. The table part was so funny to me. He manages to get it back in the ring and sets it up. He spears Whitmer, and then Whitmer gets placed on the table. Jacobs climbs up top, but Whitmer fights back. Then he ends up back on the table, and there's a sent on to Whitmer. The table does not break, uh, except for one of the legs. So Jacobs sets it up outside the ring, went in on the apron, went in on the ground. At this point, Adam Cole is left because uh, Kevin Kelly accused him of being the, uh, the KRD, this mysterious masked figure who's been terrorizing everybody in Ring of Honor. So Adam Cole didn't like that. And uh, Kevin Kelly basically was just being mean, saying he was breaking the code of honor. And so he left. And Kevin Kelly's by himself now. Uh, another sent on to Whitmer. This time the table breaks as it's outside the ring. Back into the ring for a near fall. Uh, Dragon Sleepmare applied to Whitmer by Jacobs. He breaks free, hits a huge brain buster onto Jacobs, and then takes him, hits a brain buster, another one onto a chair. Jacob kicks out of that. I thought that was for sure going to be the end of that match. Uh, and there's a cutter, and he goes for an acid drop, but Whitmer breaks free. And then... Um, he gets one up top again this time, an acid drop. That is Jacobs to Whitmer for the nearest of near falls I wrote down. Hit, that hand was like a, so close to being a three count. That was great. Well timed. Yes. And then Jacobs sets up two chairs back to back, two big lariats to Jacobs, and then an exploder to Jacobs onto the chairs by Whitmer. T-bone suplex. T-bone suplex. Sorry. It's an exploder. Uh, Whitmer gets the win in 16 minutes. I liked the match. Uh it had, it had some nice moments in it. I gave it 3.25 stars just because the the audience didn't seem too invested in it, but I had a good time watching it. I gave it three and a quarter, too. I think there were some good, good, good parts, but then some parts it seemed like it dragged on. And again, 
I think this match I would have rated it higher if the crowd would have been more involved. But they just seemed so dead, and I just I don't know. It was it was good, but I don't think it hit that next level, that next gear. Well, especially when this was, I believe this was the only no DQ match it was. on the card. Yeah. So you expect, you know, when when the hardcore spots come at a premium, especially in some of the spots we had here, yeah. um, that this match would have been better and more exciting. But yeah. I, I gave it three stars. I did like uh, when they slammed them on chairs on the chairs and stuff. They weren't really slamming them on the actual seat of the chair. They were slamming them on like the like top on the edge, of yeah. it and stuff. So that was especially how that uh, that T bone suplex at the end was. And so that that looked a lot more brutal. I liked how they utilized things a little bit differently. Yeah, you can just tell uh, with ROH, with Impact, with New Japan, they they strive to be different. Yeah, they yeah. strive to be different than the traditional American WWE wrestling. Yep, and I I, I love it because I'm always seeing something I've never seen yeah. before. Um, I feel like if any of the matches on this card could have benefited from like backstory, because this 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 feud like a, actually a video had yeah. like a big backstory to it. Like it had. Uh, it, it, it was had, a grudge. Yeah. And, I mean, granted, if you did a video package on this show, the live crowd isn't going to be able to see it. But if it's a taped show, so you could easily just put it in a post. I'm not getting into it, but this feud really could have used it because it, it... I don't know. It was an actual story, and it was an ongoing rivalry, and, and this would this was Jimmy Jacobs' last match in Ring of Honor. And uh, it showed because after the match... Uh, Lacey came out to save the day because Colby was just like beaten up. Poor Jimmy Jacobs had to sell to this like scrawny emo so kid. So, side note, yeah, on Lacey, yeah, this was a one night return because she was retired. Oh, okay, point. so that's why the crowd pops so big. Yeah, and um, she she was associated with Jacobs long ago. Right, right. Uh, so Colby Carino is attacking Jacobs. Lacey comes out to save the day. Uh, they kind of walk out arm in arm together through the crowd as this ballad plays and a thank you Jimmy chant arises a good send off I thought for Jacobs after the match every rose has a thorn that's right it wasn't that song but <laughs> I know what you mean uh, so up next right into another match uh, Christopher Daniels versus Roderick Strong uh, couldn't really find much about the story going into this match so we'll just get into it there's some map based wrestling to start uh, really nice really nice sequence here there's a scoop slam to Strong and then a split legged moonsault to Strong for a near fall Good, great, and amazing split like good moonsault that Daniels does. Uh, Strong tries a basement dropkick to the outside, but Roddy counters it. Uh, Daniels uh, tries a split like moonsault on the outside and misses it, lands on his feet, and then Roddy hits a backbacker right into the ring apron for his troubles. And there's a nice dropkick to Daniels by Roddy on the outside. Roddy catches Daniels from the top rope and then hits a big backbacker for a near fall inside the ring. The Messiah of the backbacker just doing what he does. A back suplex to Roddy and then a blue thunderbomb to... Uh, Daniel to Roddy for a Daniels near fall and then some kind of top rope maneuver for a, a Roderick Strong near fall I didn't exactly know what it was uh, and then Angel's Wings gets countered into a backdrop by Roddy and then there's a running forearm and an angle slam to Daniels for a Roderick Strong near fall and then there's like a Uranagi backbreaker to Daniels uh, by Strong and then a running knee to Daniels followed by a superplex for a near fall and then Daniels go, goes for the BME he misses he lands back on his feet again uh, Strong Rolls it into the stronghold, and then Daniels rolls that into a roll-up for a near fall. And then Roddy hits a sick kick for a near fall. The ending sequence of this match was fantastic, by the way. And then Roderick Strong hits a torture rack backbreaker onto Daniels, rolls him back into the stronghold. He can't take the pain. He taps. Roderick Strong wins the match in 13 minutes. I didn't write a ton of notes for this Phenomenal. match. Phenomenal. But this was a really, really good match. Uh, I wouldn't have expected anything less from these two guys. Uh, they just put on a, a clinic here. And again, if you're keeping track at home, uh, neither of these guys is currently in the company. What'd you give it, Dad? I gave it 3.75 stars. What? I guess I gave it 3.75 stars. I also gave it 3.75 stars. I really liked it. I think it could have gone a little bit longer. Yep. Again, I felt the crowd let him down. Yeah. Um, I want to point out like something we, you and me have been talking about this a lot for the last week. How did Daniels never really get that right. WWE run? But part of me is starting to think that he just didn't want it. I feel like yeah, so. No I'm torn because. Uh, obviously wrestling's changed a lot whereas you can make a sustainable living in other promotions that aren't the WWE but after his TNA run and before like the Ring of Honor resurgence like he couldn't have been doing that great I feel like it's hard to turn down a WWE offer if, if, if he ever got one but again he's such a different guy that maybe he just wanted that freedom you know? I mean you can also look at Sting as a guy who yeah but the argument with Sting is that Sting 
went to back to work and he kept wrestling and he wrestled for TNA. Right, but but and Dan, Daniels and Kazarian were traveling all around the world. Apparently, yeah. and, uh, apparently he had a develop. Christopher Daniels had a developmental contract in the late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah, in the very beginning of his career. Yeah, he and like, he also had a contract with WCW too, and yeah. he was supposed to be the mastermind behind something with Vampiro. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, they were considering making him the higher power. Instead of Vince McMahon in '99. Yeah, I remember. Oh my about God, that, that yeah. would have been. There's amazing. all kinds of crazy things that no. they wanted Daniels to do. They blew that. So for whatever reason, yeah, none of the, is he the best worker to never yes. like, work for WWE? Yes, I can't think. Does Kenny Omega count? He's, he was he's in worked de- for WWE. He was in development, right? Yeah, he was in development for WWF, but, but he was never, never in the the main roster, was WWE. he? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the two guys, right? And and to be fair, like be. Daniels is a, is quite a bit older than Omega. Like Omega could still end up there. Maybe. Someday. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, but I would. I would. Those are one A and one B. You can't really yeah. go wrong. Yeah. Um, so I, I gave this one four stars. Nice. I, I love. It was a good it. match. Um, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen a ton of. I've seen a couple, but I don't, haven't seen a ton of Roderick Strong matches. You go He's get on so the good. WWE good. Network yeah. and good. just look him up. He's God. so good. You can tell that like. He's put. He's very. So much, he's he's underrated. Right. He's ring. not. He's not a good promo, as I'm. Hearing, oh, he's an awful promo. <laughs> but 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 that's why but, he's with the undisputed era now. Yeah. But he supplements that uh, with his personality through his move set. Yeah. And he he has like a signature name for every freaking move. I know. Which has me thinking, poor Kevin Kelly, you had to memorize this whole array names, yeah. of moves, and it's just all sorts of different innovative shit. It's he's great. so he's fun. so good, it's and he's so he's gotten better with age too. Like if you watch, like some of the matches when they were feuding with. Uh, then this is recently in NXT when they were kind of feuding with uh, Mustache Mountain for the NXT tag team titles. They put on two or three of the best tag team matches I've ever seen in my life. Uh, w- go back and watch those matches because they are just, it's amazing. So the only thing that I wish here, unless correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but Christopher Daniels got his butt whooped earlier by Michael Elgin. Uh-huh. He was not selling any of that. No, not here. at all. Not at all. Not that I saw. I no, he wasn't. I would have liked to see something. Yeah, I guess it wasn't really a brutal post match beatdown, so it's whatever. But yeah, but still, that, Michael that's a, that's Elgin a fair just point. bullied him a little bit. Um, and again, lunch money. Uh, neither of these guys are currently with a company. Nice. Daniels is, of course, with his buddy Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky in AEW, and Roger Strong's in the Undisputed Era. It definitely felt like they left it all out there, though. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the match quite a bit. Ne- up next is the Kingdom, the original Kingdom. Mike Bennett and Matt Taven, a co- company to the ring, the Merkel. By uh, Luke's favorite person on planet Earth, Maria Kanellis, versus Red Dragon, <gasps> Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. They're the champions. Accompanied by Tom Lawler. Filthy yeah, accompanied Tom. by Tom Lawler. I didn't write that down. I'm glad you said it. Uh, and this is for the tag team titles that uh, O'Reilly and Fish currently hold. And might um, I say, Maria, she's wearing a zip up here, but I mean, she could be wearing a, a nun costume. She could be wearing anything, and she would just look fantastic. I don't think Luke paid attention to one move in this match. When Maria oh no! It was, was it was screen. actually a very 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 good match. But, this is my but, match but the Maria, night. mine too. Dad. But, <laughs> she's a good looking gal. Yes, not. Uh, so I hope Mike Bennett insult, beat your ass. Please don't insult Maria Canellas like that. Uh, so I'm just gonna do it right at the top here. One of these guys is still in the company, and that is Matt Taven. And funny enough, he's still with the Kingdom. He's still the leader of the Kingdom. There's some drama later. on Twitter last night with. Uh, That's what you're saying between with, Bennett and, Taven and the Revival, right? Well, Maria, yeah, Maria <gasps> Taven and the Revival. The Revival <gasps> were accusing Taven of stealing, like. Suntan lotion or something it's, it's, from a WWE tryout. It's Taven. Taven, sorry. God, noob. noob. What a mark. <laughs> uh, Nerd. Really? So, hey, maybe Taven comes back to WWE and we get the original kingdom back I would together. love that. They can't call him the kingdom, obviously. They could. Could they? I'm sure they could. Oh, They're yeah, WWE. You, you, they can... Uh, yeah, you think ROH just copyright the hell out of that? Maybe. Look, mm. look at the Broken Hardys. Uh, true, true. Sting. So we get into this match. Yeah. This is a really good match. Uh, so Bennett and Kyle O'Reilly start. There's a hip drag into an arm bar by Kyle O'Reilly. God, his 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 moves that set up his submissions are so clean and so good. Also, his wow. strike his striking is ridiculous. Oh, I love his strikes, his his jabs, and his palm strikes, especially. His palm strikes are brutal. Just some strong style ass shit. Yeah. Uh so yeah, the hip drag into the arm bar, super oh. nice, but Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> Kyle Kyle O'Reilly, every time he uh Every time he like throws a a big strike or something or like dives off the top rope, it's yeah. Anytime he does anything in this match, it's yeah. <laughs> He's yawn up a storm in this match. Uh, hey Kyle, what do you think about Kyle Riley's yaws? He still does it. I know he does. Yeah, he's like turned it up to eleven now. Yeah, uh, yeah, and his promos now. If you watch him in the background of the Undisputed Era, he's always doing something funny. I know he's crazy. I love him. In the, he's like my favorite member of the Undisputed Mine Era. Mine too. I think. Well, 
I like Adam Cole a lot. Bebe. 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 Uh, so Bennett gets the ropes off the armbar spot. And then uh, he's really, I, what I liked about this early on was that Bennett was like really selling the effects of this armbar. Like he was like working with like a limp arm for a while after. And he didn't apply it for very long, but it was just a good job of selling the effects of it, I thought, and making it look like a strong maneuver. Be underrated. Yes. Uh, O'Reilly goes for some kicks, but Bennett uh, just takes a bump without getting hit and then tags in Taven. That was pretty funny. And then Fish gets tagged in. Big chops to Fish here. Fish gets sinks in an armbar and then uh, Taven gets the ropes. There's a springboard sent on to Taven for a near fall. And then a bunch of quick tags here by Red Dragon. Red Dragon. Bennett gets taken out for good noob. measure here. <laughs> he uh, got you. What? I called you a noob because you oh, called him Red Dragon. Sorry, Mark. Uh, O'Reilly is working over Taven here. Uh, Taven misses a springboard kick, and then he hits one to Fish right after that. And then Bennett comes in. O'Reilly gets worked over by the kingdom in their corner for a long time. There's a springboard moonsault by Taven for a near fall, uh, essentially a lion salt. Uh, really nice. Uh, Taven hits a sunset flip into a Kyle O'Reilly armbar. Again, just the transition work here by O'Reilly is just out of this world. Uh, and then he uh, flips a double bird to Taven and then just starts kicking the hell out of him. Uh, both men are down now. Uh, O'Reilly tries going for the hot tag, but Bennett pulls Fish out of the ring and he can't quite get it. And then Taven pulls O'Reilly away, so the tag cannot happen. Uh, Bennett accidentally clotheslines Taven at this part, and then Fish finally gets tagged in. There's a T-bone suplex. There you go, buddy. To Bennett Thanks, in the corner pal. for a near fall. And then O'Reilly hits a huge form to Taven in the corner and some double team work right there. And then Kyle O'Reilly gets a triangle over the top rope. Oof. That was so cool. I love that shot, dude. That was insane. Uh, that's something he does a lot now, too. And every time he does it, it's just oof. And then Kyle O'Reilly gets the dragon sleeper on a Taven. And then Lawler, at this point, just grabs Maria Canellas and just takes her away. He stole her. I don't know what happened back there, but she was gone. I'm the, pissed. Well, when an MMA fire takes you away, you don't come <laughs> back. You're not fighting back. Yikes. Uh, yeah, that was odd. Uh, but goodbye, Maria Canellas. Sorry about that, uh, Luke. I miss you. Uh, so all four men are down now, and there's a super kick from Taven to Kyle O'Reilly, and then a side of suplex by Fish to Taven. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly gets a sleeper on Bennett onto his back, and then there's a big kick to Kyle O'Reilly while Bennett is holding him in place, and there's a twist to fate, a swanton bomb um, by Taven for Paying a Fish tribute to fall. them Hardys, boys. Yeah, paying tribute to the Hardys. Uh, and then Taven accidentally takes out Bennett again with a dive, and there's a running knee to Taven outside. Uh, and then he goes down, Kyle O'Reilly does after the dive with a hurt ankle. And I don't know if this was a work or not, but he was down for a while. It's set up for something, Dude. so I want to say it was a work. Um, but it, he sold it. He like sold he it really, it. really well. And the ref did a really good job of coming out and checking on him. Uh, and then Fish checks on Kyle O'Reilly outside and then uh, gets speared by Bennett. And then a masked man, the KRD, comes out, uh, runs in, tries to help the kingdom while the ref is distracted. But just And, ke- and keep in mind, Adam Cole is not at the broadcast booth. No, he's gone unquote. at this point, which kind of backs up the theory that he's messing around with the KRD. Uh, he takes out Bennett on accident and then leaves. And then uh, Fish hits like a Michinoku Draper type bomb onto Bennett yep. for the win in 18 minutes. This is a really, really good match. Wonderful. Uh, wow. Um, I guess I should explain what the KRD is now. The K- the Yeah, the KRD. So basically it was just like this mysterious cloaked masked figure who was kind of like cutting spooky video promos and interrupting matches. And Do you know what that being stood bad. for? KRD? I, I don't know. Uh, God, so we got ACH, KRD. KRD. Right. Uh, it turned out to be Chris Sabin. I uh, love Chris. Return to Chris Ring of Honor. Saban. And uh, it was something that they had to kind of extend from what I understand because Saban was injured. But that's where it went. It was not Adam Cole, which, I mean, it was kind of obvious if you were watching that it wasn't going to be, but it was an interesting setup at the time. Uh, I give the match four stars. Again, I thought this was I thought this was really good. Uh, can't go wrong with the, any, any Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly match. Can't go wrong, but it helps if you're working with guys like Bennett and Taven. Just really good. My match of the night. I give it four and a quarter. I have been on a tag team kick lately, man. Yeah, dude. I have been loving me some tag team matches. Well, we've been watching some outstanding matches, Hey, and too. can I interject real quick? If we're talking about tag team matches, shout out to the NXT UK Blackpool Takeover because Mustass Mountain and uh, and the Grizzled Young Veterans put on an excellent, excellent tag team match for the inaugural uh, UK tag team titles. Well, I was just thinking about the, the, the Lucha, Lucha Bros, Bros. and uh, tag, LAX. Tag team wrestling is in a place and right then, now. Then I saw oh, this, and I'm just like, top. these these are two of the best tag team matches I think I've ever watched. Honestly, I knew that I knew that tag team wrestling was different. I mean, and I know this took a long time, but I went to an NXT house show like three years ago, uh, whenever Samoa Joe was still in it, mm-hmm. uh, and Nia Jax too. Um, but I watched American Alpha live, and that's literally when I was like, Something tag team on. wrestling yeah. is is different. It's on a whole new yeah, level dude. now. And ever since then, I've just seen such amazing matches. And I'm here for it. I'm glad. Awesome. What did you think of this match? Luke? Oh, well, uh, you're going to ask me what I think what about you it? What'd you give it, Dad? What'd you give it? You give it 4.25 stars. You already told I, me. Was I it. done? I'd tell no, me. No, I wasn't done talking. He wasn't. Sorry. Um, 
I just want to say, I wish Bennett was being used better. Yeah. I know he's on 205 Live and stuff, but he should be like an intercontinental U.S. title type challenger at least. can we talk about the BS that he is Mike Kanellis? Why does, why does his gimmick have to be... He, he should just be the miracle Mike Bennett yes, on TV again. of course he should. Because that run with Impact where he beat Kurt Angle and stuff was fantastic. Yeah, he was really good. I Oh, I just love him. I want him to he be doesn't doing have more. That, does he have that stupid little like tiny man bun shaved head thing anymore? Yeah, it's like even more pronounced now. Uh, I just wish he had a better theme song and a like. I love his theme song. Yeah, Zach Come loves on, it. I love. I, his I, theme song. I basically said the trigger Zach, but I just think Ben <laughs> should be higher up on the card. I agree. I agree. But I, I am interested in seeing what he, he also does shouldn't on be two five live. He also shouldn't be two five live. They're like kind of getting some bigger guys on the roster now. That's but. like this is like when Matt Hardy pretended he was a cruiserweight. Yeah. He didn't Buddy pretend. <laughs> uh, Luke, what did you think of the match? I gave it four stars. I mean, it was it was phenomenal, man. It was really like good. The, just just wonderful tag team action. Um, Kyle O'Reilly. So I already knew how uh, underrated uh, Mike Bennett was. Uh-huh. Kyle O'Reilly impressed me the most. Yeah, um, he's really good. He, dude, he's he's really good. His his just his striking in general. I was like, oh my god. He has an MMA background, I believe. Oh, does yeah, that makes sense? Legitimacy, or that, that uh, makes sense. If not MMA, some type of martial art. But also the way he was able to sell the ankle, or if he yeah. broke it, I mean, yeah, I, I think it was work, but again, know, like so it, it was hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, four, four stars, awesome, 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 awesome. Up next, oh, can I? Uh, ACH is not as cool of a uh, abbreviation as you would think. What is it? It's, it's just his it's, name. It's his right? name. Yeah. yeah, it's Albert Christian Hardy. Okay, Junior. I knew it was his name. There's I no didn't J know what it was. End, so up next, we're going to get uh, Jushin Thunder Liger and Jay Lethal for the TV title. And we got a, some kind of a video package because we got this nice little anime uh, uh, video entrance. Power for Liger. Ranger. It was really cool. Uh, Which also, how the heck is... It's only because he's Japanese, man. How the heck is Jushin Thunder Liger... All, uh, by dude. the way, he's 50 here. Yeah. How has he gotten a Power Ranger knockoff gimmick over for decades? Because he's awesome. He is Cause awesome. Because he's really good. He's awesome. Uh, and this is for the TV title, which Jay Lethal holds. And this is heel Jay Lethal. And it's so funny seeing so him good. like be this evil heel. Because now on Ring of Honor television, he's like he's like the John Cena of Ring of Honor. Like he's that white meat baby face hero character now. <laughs> so like to see him here like being this cocky heel it's like so recently, it was pretty funny. Um so there's a mad exchange to start and then a surfboard style, style stretch applied to Lethal by Liger. He rolls out of the ring and does it a few times, escapes the ring to keep catching his breath, kind of just being a heel. Uh, surfboard gets fully applied to Lethal at this point and then a big torquing chin lock to Lethal. Uh, he does break free though and then Lethal misses the basement drop kick and then the leg lock gets applied to Lethal by Liger and he gets to the ropes. A lot of submissions early on here. Lethal escapes the ring again. Liger misses the basement drop kick and just gets thrown into the barricade really hard and then just one more time for good measure. Uh, and then a surfboard to Liger this time, and then an elbow to Liger, and another, and another for a near fall. Uh, Lethal then blows a snot rocket onto Liger, which was gross, and hits a rolling kick to Lethal. He's Le- in full suit. It's fine. That's true. He recovers, though, and hits a rolling kick to Lethal, and then a big palm strike to Lethal in the corner. Um, and then a hurricane runner for a Liger near fall here, and then Liger goes for a splash. Lethal gets the knees up, and just Liger just crashes onto uh, Lethal's knees. That was a good looking spot. And there's a brain buster to Lethal outside the ring. Uh, and then both men beat the 20 count because they have a 20 count in Ring of Honor. Uh, at least they did at the time. Uh, both men beat the count, but barely Weird. at the count of 19. Uh, Lethal goes for the pinfall, uh, but he like blatantly has his hands on the ropes, uh, which I thought was pretty funny because like the ref obviously notices and he breaks up the pin. Uh, Liger goes for a shot with the belt. Uh, after Lethal tries for it, Liger tries for it, uh, but he ducks, and then Liger teases he's going to try. Lethal hits a super kick, and then the lethal injection for the win in 15 minutes. This is a really, really, really fun match. Uh, how cool that like Liger can put on a match of this quality uh, at this point. He was, carry- he was carried kind by Kind of lethal. reminds me of Chris Jericho. Yeah, I can totally see They both have just had long, long careers where they seem to keep wrestling like they were in the prime. Uh, He was definitely carried by Lethal, but that's not a bad thing. You're 50 years old. He's still got his spots in. He's still wrestling today. Yeah, I gave it three and a half stars. I gave it three and three quarters. Um, I think you covered most of it. It was really good. Yeah, it was. Um, It's really cool seeing Liger and Jericho both still going at such a high level at um, an older age. Usually, you see these guys start to really slow down. And these those two are not. They're just still doing great. Well, yeah. they've slowed down a bit as far as like their physical limitations, but they're able to work around it so well that yeah. you don't notice. Exactly. Um, so I, I actually gave it four stars, Thanks. and you guys are probably going to think this is crazy because there were two other very excellent matches. This was my favorite match. Uh, nothing wrong with that. The, the, the reason being, um, they worked around Liger's limitations so well, and it was... 
Everything else seemed to move along. I mean, like the Daniels match should have went on longer, but it yeah. was a lot packed into it. Yeah. Um, the tag team match even uh, should have went longer. It was a lot packed into it. This was paced so perfectly, especially for the two people in the ring. Yeah. Um, I just loved it. Um, it was also in this match that I had like, I was like, God, there's been like six different submissions that I have just no idea what to call. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I said to, like, this is a, this styled or this style. Cause I didn't know what they were called. They're crazy looking from watching, you know, the two ba- the, like from watching TNA, WCW and WWE and playing wrestling games. I thought I had like, I thought I knew moves. I thought I like had it all down, but then with the influx, you know, in the last couple decades of new Japan and all that coming in, I, I have no idea what moves are which anymore. It's crazy. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, it's also, to keep track. are you with us? Yeah, yeah. Because sure. you seem like you know the the names of every single move. Yeah. I mean, no, but like... And like, your Nagi is your favorite thing to say about and I love you. And half the time, I'm sitting there like, what do what? I call this? Exactly. And you're like, oh, it's this. And then Luke's like, what? what? What's this move? And then you're like, oh, it's this. It's the chicken slide cocker... I was speaking well, it's Spaniel... Always, it's always like a Japanese name. Yeah. A, a chicken slide cocker spaniel chicken noodle soup. Arm Buster. Bar. That'll be my finisher if I ever get into wrestling. Thanks. And I was just talking about specifically some of the submissions of this match were like stuff I'd never seen before. Yeah, well, I think there was like modified versions too, yeah, which was yeah. awesome. Um, I do have something random. Uh-huh. If And I have this question for you guys. Let's if, hear it. If I, if I were to have any sort of anyone's lucha mask, like if I was to own a lucha mask, it would either be Jushin Thunder Liger or Ultimo Dragon. What is what is yours, Zach? Um, if I got have any luchador's mask... Kyle, you're gonna be next, okay? <sighs> La Parca. Damn it, La Parca's Kyle. good. I, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll say something. I was probably gonna say La Parca, but I'll go different. I'll say, uh, I'll say Penta. Ooh, that's Ooh, a good one. I love that's his a very mask, good dude. One. I, yeah, I'd probably go La Parca, then Penta, then Jushin. Similar mask. I think Ultimo had a very underrated. He did. Mask. He had a great mask. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So we move on. Sorry, Ray. Oh, uh, Who? if you keep his score at home, Lethal is still with Ring of Honor. Liger is not. It doesn't really count because he never really was like a full. He's, he's just a mercenary. Yeah, bro. exactly. Um, he goes everywhere. Should we get into the main event? Yes, please. Samwa Joe. Who? Sandwich Joe? Samwa. <laughs> Samwa. It's Samwa. Samwa Joe. Samoa Joe. Ah, oh, you're right. Samoa Joe versus no, Dre- Jerry Briscoe. <laughs> uh, that's Jay Briscoe. Managed by Pat Patterson. Uh, the other Briscoe brother for the Ring of Honor title, which is being held by Jay. This is Samoa Joe's return match to Ring of Honor. The last time he wrestled for the promotion was in 2008. So here we And his return, he didn't stay very long. He didn't stay very long. He'd be gone. He was already kind of working with WWE at this point because Samoa Joe was kind of like that first like breakthrough deal for them where it was not an exclusive deal when he first signed his Ring of Honor contract. Or, I'm sorry, his NXT contract. So he was still kind of working elsewhere. Uh, so he would pop in for a few matches. I think he worked, and I don't quote me on this, he worked three or four matches uh, before he would be gone at the end of spring, beginning of summer, for a full-time run in WWE, which is still ongoing. Uh, Jay Briscoe is still with the company. Uh, so this is Samojo's big return, and the crowd is very excited to see him. Uh, he he was very over, and then Jay Briscoe, again, like we said, uh, for uh, the other Briscoe, just, man, their presence is is just awesome. And Jay was, this is the point when Jay was, I mean, he's obviously the champion, but he was the top guy in this company. Right, but but Joe seemed like a bigger star here. Oh, Joe, he, definitely, Joe seemed definitely. like Joe seemed like one of the biggest stars ever in this arena. Definitely. Something unfortunate happened in this match as well that we'll get into, and I'm going to start now. So there's a big uppercut to Joe, and then some strikes in the corner as the match starts. Joe fights back, gets some chops and jabs of his own, a big boot to Joe, and then he gets an enziguri of his own. Uh, I love Briscoe's jabs. They're very old school looking. Like he like really goes back and forward with them. Uh, Joe sells his knee at this point, and he rolls out of the ring to catch his breath. Turns out he wasn't selling his knee. He actually tweaked it, and it definitely affected this match. Uh, Briscoe goes for a suicide dive, eats an enziguri instead. And I should say, Samojo's knee injury definitely affected this match, but by God, some of the spots he was doing with an injured knee, I couldn't do. I couldn't do them with two healthy knees. And they he were was, ridiculous. He was doing, like, kicks and dives and boots. Wait, did he He injured it in it, the match itself? Yeah, he injured oh, his knee during this God. match. It was a legitimate injury. I don't uh, get how these people work through these yeah. injuries. These are some and of the he worked the whole match essentially planet, with this injury because he heard it in the beginning of the match and just kept going. Uh, like, there's a corner elbow. Oh, re- ahead, sorry, wrestlers are some of the most badass people on the planet, bar none. Because uh, he was doing moves like with his bad knee too. Yes. Uh, corner elbow integrated sequence by Joe. A leg drop to Briscoe. They trade uppercuts. Briscoe gets kicked off the top rope to the floor below. Then a suicide dive to Jay by Joe. Uh, and then Briscoe gets set in the chair. Uh, Joe goes for a running kick. But he gets the chair thrown at him by Jay. Joe slams Briscoe into the barricade twice. Briscoe gets set in the chair again. And then a boot to the gut by Joe. This looked really bad. 
Uh, because of Joe's injury, he couldn't run very fast and he couldn't get like the extension on the boot. So it just looked really weak. He did it a couple times. Unfortunately, didn't have the, um, the didn't, um, didn't have the impact the that you wish it would have. Uh, Joe was really hobbling around at this point, And this is when I noticed it was probably real because I noticed Briscoe hadn't targeted it once in the match. Uh, which is kind of like the ding, ding, ding. Something's You're such wrong. a psychologist. Thank you. Uh, Joe goes for a muscle buster, but the Briscoe breaks free, hits a neck breaker. There's a super kick to Joe, and then a side suplex for a Briscoe near fall. Uh, Briscoe is bleeding from the bridge of his nose at this point. Uh, must have been on one of the moves. Uh, Briscoe fights free from the Coquina Clutch attempt, and there's a Death Valley driver to Joe for a near fall, and then a senton to Briscoe for a near fall, and then a snap power sound to Briscoe for another near fall, and there's a power bomb into the Boston Crab, like a standing Boston Crab the, the, by the, Joe. The what? Boston Crab. Okay, you were just like throwing an R in there. Broston. Yeah, yeah. The Broston crab. The Bratwurst crab. Uh, but he was standing, and then he transitions. That's German. And this was a super good sequence. So he hits the power bomb, doesn't let go. He acts like he's going to go for the pin. He goes into the Boston crab, which is a movie he does still to this day. Well, and it's like, what does he actually call it, though? I don't know. Isn't it something different? Yeah. Like, he holds them by, like, their, their low gut. Yeah, it is a name for it. Uh, and then he... Rolls out of that into an STF, turns that into the cross face, and then moves that into an arm stretch. Briscoe finally reaches the rope. There's some big strike sequence into another Joe and Zaguri. Uh, big running knee to Briscoe's chest. Uh, Urinagi out of the corner by Joe. And then a muscle buster attempt again. Briscoe avoids it. And then he hits his finisher. I didn't write down the name of it, and I've never remembered it in my entire life. And it's still the same one he uses today. Uh, but he wins the match. Uh, it's like a small package driver type move. You know, I thought you were the expert. Not a small package, a double underhook. Uh, it went 20 minutes. Briscoe retains. Uh, this match, and I don't want to obviously like hindsight's twenty twenty, but had Joe been healthy, this was probably a four star match. Yeah, maybe yes. more. Uh, this is st- and this is a huge testament because if you watch this match, it is clear and obvious that Samoa Joe is injured during this match. This is still a three star match for me, and Joe was really hobbling. Yeah, really hobbling yeah. by the end of this match. They com- he I compensated so. Well. I still give it three stars. The crowd was so into Joe. Um, and they got to thank you, Joe Chant, because he didn't really know if he was sticking around. As I said before, he ultimately, he would stick around for a few matches before going to the WWE full-time. Um, but, yeah, three stars. I also gave it three stars. Um, the injury did take it down, but I thought it was a really good return for Joe yeah. for the most part. But, yeah, good match. Three stars. Luke, what would you think of the match? Oh, I'm just, I just keep trying to find this damn submission. I move. can never remember. Mm. Uh, I gave it three stars. Um, awesome. He really did compensate so well. Like he deserves all the credit in the world for fighting through. I don't know what but the injury was, if it was just it a just sprain. It just sucks, though, because it, it really is a shame. Um, because these two clearly could have put on a much better match. Yeah. Clearly. If they could have just gone balls out, mm-hmm. um, it, it could have been incredible. But, I mean, the, the, the ending was kind of a letdown, too. I don't know. Excuse me, not the ending of the match, but this this match as the fi- as the finale. Oh yeah, the yeah, it's a bummer that it because it did kind of because for down. me there was three four star matches on this card. Yeah, this is a so. really solid. So now here's the fun part. Mm. What do you guys give the show overall? Because oh. the show does go off oh, the air at gonna, this point. Let's, let's talk about it. So, um, oh, and can I do a side check for a second? Speaking of knee injuries in Ring of Honor, uh, oh. Flip Gordon got injured yesterday, and Chris Sabin, and Chris Sabin. Uh, so. I mean, with Flip, I mean, Chris Saban's obviously getting up there in age and it's, his body's tending to, to break down a little bit. And I hope he's okay. But the one for me that's devastating was Flip Gordon because he's poised to probably become the new Ring of Honor champion. He was the number one contender. So fingers crossed there's nothing serious and he can come back to action soon. I hate seeing a guy get injured. Back to this. Um, real quick before we give it a grade. I know I'm yeah. hopping way back. Nope, you're good. But after the end of that uh, bah, 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 Jimmy Jacobs match, uh-huh. uh, when Adam Cole came back in to uh-huh. finish out commentating with Kevin Kelly. Uh-huh. Uh, he like claimed that he didn't. Oh you know, yeah, he had no, he had he came back in simply so that Kevin Kelly wouldn't accuse him of being. Yeah, what's what was it called? The what? The KRD. The KRD. I love and that. And he said, and he said, and he said, and Kelly, so help me God, if you accuse me of it, I will slap you in the face. And I love to when he came back. He was like, I know it really probably looks like that was me, but it wasn't. I came back just for this. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, overall, what'd you give so, it? This was Ring of Honor, man, in 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 this in this time period. And wrestling, wrestling, and wrestling. And they've changed a lot since. In some ways, for the better; in some ways, for the worse. Uh, creatively, right now, the product's not where it probably should be. But the presentation-wise, it has gotten a lot better. I hate to ding this show because of the presentation, because the wrestling. There was not one bad match on this card. No, but no. The presentation. I'm not. I'm not just talking about their budget, which was small, which is fine. Tiny. We've, seen, we've watched ECW shows with tiny budgets before. But I think they had more. Business. Oh, probably. But just the general presentation, it, it this, the entire show, this did not feel like a their biggest show of yeah. the year. 
it felt like a house show, a really good house show that was broadcast. Uh, that being said, it's got to it's got to affect my rating a little bit. What'd you give it? Uh, this was going to be probably an A minus show for me. I ended up giving it a B minus. Uh, Ooh, just because. Man, it, it really felt like it was missing something. It's a high B minus, like can I, B can minus I, B. Can I go ahead of you? Just oh, I guess yeah. Just take my spot. Yeah. Okay. Go well, ahead, you threw buddy. a fucking pen at me. Yeah. So. yeah. You know what? You don't get to rate this show. Go ahead, Luke. <laughs> I gave it a B minus. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So I, I gave it. I actually gave it a low B because okay. it was very so B minus. It was very hard for me. It was very hard for me with a three four star matches to to give it a B yeah. minus. I know we don't have star ratings for promos and filler and video packages and all that. But throughout this show, especially after like the fourth or fifth match, uh-huh. I found myself craving that filler, uh, as as Bruce Pritchard says, that Gaga yeah. immensely. Oh yeah! Like this show, if anything, I didn't realize how much I needed it, and this show made me realize just how important all that extra stuff is. Yeah, a lot of these matches were amazing, but it was just it was exhausting. It was exhausting going straight into each match. It was just match, okay, match, okay, match, and so I had to mark it down for that. But that was that was ROH back then. Yep. So so I give it. All right, a, Kyle, go Kyle, off. B minus. Thanks for saying what I said earlier, but um, I gave I it mean, a B minus I like I, I because articulated it better. I uh, yeah, you also cut me off. Um, you threw a I, pen at me. You deserved it. I gave it a B minus because he was just sitting here. <laughs> because I don't know, I couldn't keep my attention on it most of the show. Yeah, it, mine's, it mine's needs. A, a, there's just it just seemed like there was no character work. Yeah. No background. I, I mean, need in background the ma- in the matches there were, but. It's not like there were no stories. Like, this isn't like PWG who just run, like puts together some like really stacked cards and runs a show every month. Like they they had a story going and they had you know. But coming in cold, show coming in cold, you want to know what's going on. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be so a lot. Like Royal Rumble two thousand didn't have a lot. Like they had one video package and a couple promo sequences, but it was something. But you know, we, we watched Home Homecoming the other day. Yeah, every every match, every, every match had at least. Like a-